The randomized phase two study FIGHT um, was a study that was conducted globally, and it was a placebo controlled study that was evaluating patients that had either overexpression of FGFR2 by immunostochemistry or um, by gene amplification as assessed by circulating tumor DNA in the blood. And so this first report uh, was reported at GIASCO, and it reported the primary endpoint, which, which was progression-free survival, and also showed um, overall survival and other subgroups that were preplanned, such as higher um, expression profiles, um, 5% of cells are higher staining, or 10% of cells are higher staining, as opposed to any staining, uh, which was the primary intention to treat endpoint. And so at ASCO this year, we're presenting updated analysis, um, further details in terms of the biomarker subgroup um, um, outcomes, such as um, the outcomes by circulating tumor DNA or by immunostochemistry um, that are CTDNA negative and also the double positives, immunostochemistry positive and CTDNA positive. And so what we saw there was pretty much as would be expected is that the patients that have amplification as identified in the blood, they really have a really market benefit in terms of outcome. And that said, even evaluating patients who were IHC positive but CTDNA negative, there was still a benefit there for PFS and for OS. So this was an important subgroup analysis that sort of emphasizes that there are some patients who do extremely well and that despite that, after excluding those patients, there's still benefit amongst the remaining patients that are overexpressing but not gene amplified. And then the other part of the abstract was looking at um, the survival estimate, a secondary endpoint. In the first report at the first data cut, which was some um, in the fall of last year, 2020, the, um, the survival in the bemeritizumab arm, the antibody to FGFR2, had not been reached in the intention to treat analysis, nor in the, the subgroups of 5% of cells staining or higher or 10% of cells staining or higher. So a more recent data cut at, um, with longer follow-up um, in February of this year, which was a median follow-up time of um, 12 and a half months now. Um, the, that's what we're reporting now here is the overall survival based on that longer follow-up. And in the intention to treat analysis, the median follow-up was, uh, the median overall survival was uh, more than 19 and a half months um, compared to 13 or so in the control arm. And then in the, um, the subgroups of patients with 5% and 10% cutoff, this was even more pronounced. And it was not reached in the 5% um, or higher group still. And in the 10% or higher group, it was 25 months um, median overall survival versus 11 in the control arm. So these are pretty outstanding and remarkable survival rates. And, and so very promising and clear activity there with this agent. We also showed that across um, subgroups, um, pre-specified subgroups like gender, um, age, um, prior therapy um, for perioperative setting, and whether or not patients received one dose of chemotherapy or not while screening, that the benefits sort of were still um, maintained across those different subgroups. And, and then last, what we looked at was um, updated information about the toxicity profile. And so generally the toxicity profile of this drug is well tolerated, but there was um, uh, two um, higher incidences of toxicities. One was stomatitis and the other one was um, ocular toxicities, keratitis um, and, and dry eye. And so we reported um, the more detail about it in terms of the breakdown by grade one, two, or three keratitis, um, about 20% each of those. Um, and then we also showed the median time to onset of, of uh, grade two or higher toxicity, ocular toxicity, which was on the order of uh, 25 weeks and um, median. And then we also showed that the majority of patients did have resolution of this toxicity upon discontinuation of the drug. 
and that the median time um, um, to resolve or to get to grade one um, was on the order of 17 weeks. So, um, you know, most patients will have resolution of this. And also the fact that it was a long lag time before developing grade two toxicity um, maybe suggests that we have an opportunity to implement some sort of a prophylactic measure that might mitigate that from, from coming on. So those were the main highlights of, of the updates in terms of the fight study.